Hello, YouTube family. It's not cute not knowing is what I love to say. I'm Patty Jackson. I'm your auntie of pop culture, or as the local TV people call me around here, the pop culture expert. They just said that. I swear I'm going to run with it. It's not cute not knowing, and now we're going to know. Let's start with a hug. Starting off with some sad news, especially if you're a Curb Your Enthusiasm fan. After Richard Lewis has died, he was 76, he was one of the featured performers on Curb Your Enthusiasm. I just watched, I think it was episode two or three, and he was featured prominently in it. He was known from the late night talk shows, always being a staple. He needed a different brand of comedy. It was just last year that Richard Lewis announced that he was battling Parkinson's disease and he had undergone surgeries and now we get the news that he has passed on Richard Lewis dead at the age of 76. Well finally we know what happened to Jam Master J. It was 21 years ago when he was murdered in his studio. It was 2002 and two men have been convicted because they were found guilty of his murder. Why did it take 21 years? Jam Master J, part of Run DMC, hip hop history, music history, one of the first hip hop groups to really like cross over and make a smash. It took so long, very long. And you know why it took them so long? Because these two idiots, and they were idiots, they know how to shut up. One of them was his godson. The other was a longtime friend. They went in there and murdered Jam Master J. There were two other people. One man got shot in the leg and a woman who they just scared the heck out of. They were able to identify them. They would walk around bragging, we killed Jam Master J. The old girlfriends came and testified. Apparently they thought it was a conversation you know, maker to say, I killed Jam Master J. The two men have gotten 20 years to life. So they got the minimum that they'll serve is 20 years. You got to think this happened 21 years ago. And finally, a resolution to the death of Jam Master J. Big congratulations to actress Gabby Sidibe from the movie Precious. She starred alongside Monique. She was also in the Lee Daniels show Empire. At 40, Gabby is expecting twins with her husband, and she's due later this year. Wendy Williams' brother is talking. Tommy says that Wendy has made a substantial amount of improvement, and she's in an undisclosed treatment facility. The lifetime producers of Where Is Wendy Williams say they now regret airing this and going along with it being aired because they had no idea how bad the drinking was, then the dementia, then the aphasia. It was a money grab for them. They knew exactly what they were doing. When they started filming, if they went in, and thought, oh, we're filming her comeback. You knew something was wrong from the beginning, so why didn't you stop? Why did you say, you look going to change the storyline and show her how she is? Now, I know they say Wendy Sun is a producer. She is a producer. But do you really think in her right mind that she would want people to see her in the state that they showed? The confusion, you can see with the dementia, the drinking, no wig, she would not have agreed to that. Now I'm hearing the guy, Will, who was her manager that they featured in the documentary, he's gone. The publicist, Sean, she's gone because they were all under the impression she's making this big TV comeback and that's all they thought about. The drinking, the bottles, none of that rung something in their head like, oh, there's something terribly wrong here. But they're saying that uh, 
It was a money grab. Why don't y'all just say it was a money grab? That's what it was. A money grab. Just say it. They're claiming that they would not have shown it. Meanwhile, how much of an improvement if you've got dementia and aphasia? With the aphasia, it robs you of your motor skills. And they're saying she's probably going to have about two more years before it takes over and she's not able to talk. They're not releasing where she is. Probably because of the ex-husband who says that he's the one who's going to save her legacy. They don't want him nowhere near her. That's the latest from the family. This lawsuit that's being um, against Diddy, Puffy. And he says, I'm the victim of a cancel culture. Diddy, you done did some dirt and everybody talking. This is a male producer who produced his last album, the love album. Well, they done found copies of the the lawsuit and how it's detailed. And they were very specific that some of the other people named in the lawsuit in these crazy activities with Diddy included a male superstar who had a Vegas residency who just performed at the Super Bowl. We know who they're talking about. A Philadelphia rapper who used to date Nicki Minaj. You know what they're talking about. It's really bad. Stevie J, who his name said, don't be putting his name in that. Um, Meek Mill has, I didn't gave the name, I'm sorry. The rapper said that he would not be involved in anything like that. I don't think that Diddy is the victim of cancel culture. I think it's his karma for what he has done to a lot of people. Now, here's my question to you. Do you think he's the victim of cancel culture? Do you think he can ever come back from this? Everybody is backpedaling. They don't want no parts of this. I don't think he's the victim of cancel culture. He's the victim of his own culture and the things he did to other people. It's going to be interesting how this plays out. Um, social media sensation TikTok, Risa Tisa, who had the series, Who the, That I Marry. She met this man. They fell in love. They divorced. She realized he was a pathological liar. You got to be careful. I've been saying it for the past week. You got to be careful. Some of the comments have been very cruel. Saying, well, what does she expect? She is fat, back fat. What does that have to do with anything? Anybody can meet a pathological liar and fall for him. Skinny, heavy, straight, gay. You can meet a pathological liar because they're out there. Some of the comments have been very cruel. Well, the ex-husband's brother has reached out to Risa just to clarify some stuff. He's bipolar. He does not take his meds. He did a lot of lying about their parents. Could she please kind of, you know, like clean it up as she tells the story? Because he threatened her saying, you mad because I take you back. Be careful who you fall for because they do exist in these streets. And watch out for the love bombing. Can't nobody love you after five minutes. It's like, go over there and sit down because you don't know me at all. But love bombing is very real. Mitch McConnell stepping down. Senate leader for 17 years. He's 82. He done blanked out on us twice. Talking about something. I'm going to leave in November. Sir, you should have left yesterday. You're waiting for the outcome of the presidential election. If there's a chance that Trump got back in, you ain't on the list of who he wants Um in there. He literally like flashed out on us twice. And it was like, he had a stroke. He had one of them TS, that systematic thing. You should have retired, sir, a long, long time. Don't make us wait until November. It's not cute not knowing. Leave a comment. I threw out some questions. I accidentally threw out the name of 
somebody was named in the lawsuit. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And you know I love to hear from you. So please leave a comment. It's not cute not knowing. And now you know. I'm Patty Jackson. I am your auntie of pop culture.